Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! Welcome back to Two Funny Astronauts. I'm one of your co-hosts, Garrett Reisman. And uh, I'm the other co-host, Mike Massimino. Thanks for joining us. Remember, we're not saying that we're funny people. We're saying we're funny for astronauts. So hold us, hold us to that standard. Low bar. That's right. Yeah. Um, so last episode, we were talking about how we get no respect at all. No respect. Right. And, and, and man, but mainly after we, when we never got any respect our whole lives, but, but we're talking mainly getting the disrespect of being an astronaut but not flying in space yet. And you have one more story about that, right, Gary? You wanted That's to share right. about your pre-flying So days? we talked in the last episode about how well, even before you fly in space, they send you out as, a, as an astronaut. And, and it's hard to call yourself an astronaut because you've never been off the ground. Uh, but, you know, you're waiting for your turn and, and, and you got to do your job doing these public relations events. So they send you out, and um, even though you got no idea what it's like to be up in space, what the Earth looks like, or how do you go to the bathroom, everything that people want to know, you got no idea. You say, "Oh, my friends," they say, it's, "They say it's like this," you know. Uh, mm-hmm. So you go out there, and and this one time they sent me to uh, Ireland, which is a great deal. Actually, this is awesome. Well, that's a good one. That, I mean, it sounds like a good one, and that's one thing I want. I just preface quickly. Is that there's some some the one thing I learned was the saying there's no such thing as a good deal PR I know a public relations event they sound really good that one sounds really good so what was it well, this like? one sounded great and uh, but there was there was it was kind of like uh, online dating because there was false representation on both sides <laughs> 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 so on their side like we get this letter from the Irish Astronomical Society signed by. Uh, uh, give me, give me, uh, I, I don't remember her name, but like Colleen Fitzpatrick. Okay. Colleen Fitzpatrick of the Irish Astronomical Irish Society, name. president and founding member, blah, blah, blah. And this is really nice on the stationery. It's and it, with a lot of fancy words. And, and it was like, it was sounded like a really august, uh, society. And, and like, uh, and, and we figured that this was going to be like the, the, the leading astronomer, the, 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 the leading scientist in all of Ireland was inviting us over. And I get there and there's this, this wow. I get to the airport and this girl picks me. I say girl because she was like 17, picks me up at the, at the, at the airport. And I'm like, and I, I was like, oh, you're, you're just like somebody they got to drive me. She goes, no, 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 I'm Conley, I'm Colleen Fitzsimmons. <laughs> Like, I expected oh, you said Fitzpatrick expect, before. There's a different one. It, no, it's the same one. The same I, expect, one or different I expected one? like a the Nobel Prize winning scientist, and I got this 17 year old girl, Colleen. But she was great, young lady, huh? young I'm woman. Sorry, young. Well, it, she was pretty young, yeah, young lady. It, 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 I don't know what the proper age is. Young woman. Okay, young woman. So right. Colleen Fitzsimmons picks me up, and uh, and it turns out it's just like this college club. It's not the Irish Astronomical Society. It was just like a bunch of undergrads in a club. It wasn't actually like real mm-hmm. scientists. <laughs> you know, you know so, like, <laughs> so we got kind of hoodwinked. But they got hoodwinked too because, they, of course, they wanted either John Glenn or Eileen Collins. <laughs> 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 they got me. So that's what I'm saying. We both lied. So anyway, there I am. And actually, the, the thing in Dublin at Trinity College where the Irish Astronomical Society is based – was actually really wonderful. Have you, have you ever been to, to Dublin? I have. It's, actually, Ireland is one, of, I would say, one of my favorite places. I've only been there once, but it's just, actually, I've been there more than once, but one one time was too quick. I guess getting a chance to look around that countryside, it's like a visit to heaven. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. In Dublin, I had a great time in Dublin. That was so much, such a fun Fantastic. place. Everyone's happy. There's a bar every like every block, yes. you know, like across, and everyone is just. I just loved it. Oh yeah. my god! It, it, Did you, it, it, you liked I it? I loved it. I loved it. The city was. I mean, it's fantastic. It was they yeah, took, it's great. They took place. really good care of me. They put me up in this really cool bed and breakfast right in downtown Dublin. Yeah. They heard I like. Yeah, beautiful. Place. They, they, it was really funny. Like, um, they they heard I like rock climbing, so they actually brought me out to some quarry. And it was like the one day that mm-hmm. the clouds wow. parted and some sun came out and we actually climbed up and uh-huh. from the top of this quarry, it was like the best, you know, there's not much rock climbing in Dublin, but they found, they found uh-huh. a place. And I'm like, I really would rather just go wow. to the pub and stuff. I could rock climb at home on like real <laughs> mountains, but they're like, no, 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 we yeah. like, we heard you like to do this. So yeah. like, okay. And, yeah. uh, uh, and it was, you know, the whole thing was phenomenal and, and Trinity college, mm-hmm. 
uh did you did you visit there Very to see beautiful. the book of kells yeah. or anything there yeah, yeah 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 it's like it's like hogwarts right amazing yes yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's amazing they brought place. me into like the dining hall for a meal like and i got and, and i'm like mm-hmm. it's this is just like harry potter you know it's like everybody's got the robes yeah. on they got like you know, it's like uh, you expect yeah. like the candle, the candelabras to start flying around and ghosts to appear. I mean, it was like it was like that, right? It's so cool. Yeah, and I'm having a great time. Except I kind of, I kind of, uh, um, I, I kind of made myself a little unwelcome, I suppose. By so they're giving me this tour and they're talking about the the rich uh, history of astronomy in Ireland, and they were talking about the fact mm-hmm. that at one point, like something like in the Middle Ages. Uh, the world's largest telescope in the entire world was in Ireland. And I, and I, I, I saw they showed me a sketch of this thing. I looked at it. I'm like, ah, it's a crying shame. And they're like, like, what do you mean? We're very proud of this. And I'm like, well, what you can, what, it's always cloudy here. You need to use that thing like one day a year. You, oh, there's a st- one star. Let's go. That's like, when do you what, 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 put that thing in somewhere like in the in the in the desert where it can be used? <laughs> you can't, like, yeah. like, what's that? Why did that guy build the world's largest telescope in his castle to look at like the lady in the next <laughs> castle? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they didn't find that they didn't find the humor in that at all. So um, no. no. So they had it right in the middle of Dublin. This this telescope was. I don't. know. It was somewhere in the, in this in was, the, some nobleman's estate, like outside. And I don't know. Yeah. But I gave, I gave my yeah. lecture there. It went really well. The whole thing was great. And then they're like, then this is where it starts taking the turn for the worse. Okay. They said, okay, well, we have a sister organization in Northern Ireland, which turns out is this is when you're there. They yes. tell you this. Would you mind after you got? We you told did. them you would stop by. Yeah. <laughs> we told him you would come by to say hi to them. And we got a train ticket for you here to go up to Belfast. All right. Oh, nice. I'm like, that sounds cool. All right, I'll go. You know, you know I'm, a, I'm an adventurous type. What, what, why not? So I get on the train and I go up there to Belfast. And this guy picks me up at the train station. And it's some grad student. Some, some kid. It's like, hi, I'm Ian mm-hmm. from uh, the northern branch of the uh irish astronomical society and i said mm-hmm. oh, okay well thanks for picking me up hey we're gonna do this presentation tonight i have some questions for you about you know the av thing is always a pain in the neck do you use windows or mac yeah. and what kind of projector do you have and mm-hmm. like any and, and and how big how big is the audience going to be what's the facility like and he looks at me goes like he says i, I didn't tell anybody you were coming <laughs> <laughs> He goes, yeah, you know, he goes, after I drop you off at your hotel, uh, I'm going to make some calls to see if who's in town. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, great, 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 great. Uh, yeah. And it turns out my, my PhD advisor at Caltech, he's from this little tiny village called Magra de Felt, which is right outside of Ooh. Belfast or, or pretty close there. And his brother mm-hmm. lived uh, in Belfast, so I was going to go. I wanted to meet up with him anyway. So I said, look, I'm going to go mm-hmm. after checking at the hotel. I'm going to go and 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 meet my, my advisor's brother for tea. Uh, how about you give me a call when you figure out what the deal is for tonight? And he said, okay. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm having tea with this guy, and it's great. It, it's actually really nice. And then the, my phone rings, and it's this graduate student. He goes, he goes yeah, I made some call. Nobody's here. <laughs> everybody's out of town <laughs> so it's just me and i'm like oh man i'm like well all right how about we go out to dinner with my with uh my my advisor's brother and his family you could join us from di- for dinner we'll just call it good he's like okay so i go to some nice restaurant and i remember uh so there's my big my big trip to northern ireland as an astronaut turns into just like dinner with some with this kid and um and I have this big, you know, the, you know, the big montages that we would put together. Sure. Yeah. So I had one of these, these things are like poster size. Right. And they got photos of uh, flights. If, if you're going like to Ireland, they put a, a, a picture of Ireland from space on there. And I had the Northern Ireland flag like on the mm-hmm. on the thing that it was flown in space. And usually so I, I got this thing and I said and I, I got it there at the restaurant. And I said to the guy, I'm like, look. Normally we make a big deal when we hand these things out because they're not 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 too many people get a flag that flew in space, 
present it to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, we make a big announcement and it's a, and, and, uh, and, uh, but here we are at dinner, but listen, this thing is huge, right? I'm not going to carry this thing back on the flight all the way back to Houston and shove it into the overhead compartment. It's a pain in the ass. So why don't you just take it? (laughs) (laughs) He goes, all right. So somewhere in Northern (laughs) Ireland, this kid's got a flown flag. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, that's the way. That, that's that's. This is all before you you flew. That's though, correct. Was this these these things? All right, and then we want to move on to what happens to us after we yeah, fly. So there's a little bit, you know, there's a little bit more respect. You know, in my case, like in the previous episode, I talked about how, you know, with with uh, with, with my my uh, my former father-in-law, you know, he, he didn't care about you know I was I got him, I wasn't on the cover of the parade magazine and. They were upset about, you know, they, the pizza guy didn't want my picture there. And so they were wondering, you know, what, what use is this astronaut thing? I, we can't, you know, we can't get any, no one, you know, no one can. So then after I flew, um, they had a parade in my hometown for me. And uh, it was very nice. And everyone was excited. And uh, when that was going on, it just so happened that my, my, uh, my, my father-in-law went to get his taxes done or pick up his taxes or something. And he walks into the tax guy who's in my hometown, this guy, Ben Ehrlich, right? And he had a sign in a thing, you know, welcome back to earth, Mike Massimino. He had in the thing, right? And I, I, and he had a signed picture because he used to do my father, my father by this time had already passed, but he had a picture up there, you know, that my father asked to give him his, you know, Mike Massimino, you know, thank, you know, to Ben Ehrlich, the tax guy. So I guess, I guess so Ben anyway, Ehrlich never did Mario Andretti's taxes is what you're saying. He didn't do Mario Andretti's <laughs> taxes, apparently. And so he was, but now I had flown. Yes. So it was a little more respectable in the town. It was a local thing, you know, it had spanners up and stuff like this anyway. So anyway, uh, they ended up naming the street after me. This is more recently. So my street is Mike Massimino street and they've got a, banner up there and so you know it's a little more you know a little more respect is shown i guess or whatever anyway so um so he goes to see this guy right this Ben to get his taxes done and he goes oh you got mike's picture up there and so he says Ben goes yeah you know about this guy he's from our he's from uh you know uh, he's from around the corner here and i know him he's telling all this and and so my and so fred is there saying just you know and he goes i just let him talk he goes i'm just sitting there let him talk let him talk let him talk and he's going on and on about you. And then the guy says, uh, do you know Mike? And he goes, that's my son-in-law, right? Like, now he can be proud of my... He goes, really? That's your son-in-law? And he goes, oh, he goes, oh my God, he couldn't believe it. And he goes, and you know what? He gave me 10% off my taxes. <laughs> so finally, <laughs> finally, there was something. There was some, some benefit that was shown. <laughs> finally. You get 10% off your, off your tax, you know, off your CPA wow. fee. Which probably wasn't much to so begin. Finally, with. finally, your family oh. starts to take a little pride. <laughs> finally, there was a little bit of appreciation. The parade shown. didn't do it. Uh, it, it was a ten percent off the taxes. No, nah, the parade. The parade was seen like more of a news. Oh, we got to go to a parade you now. You know that kind of thing. That was more like my more my in laws. I think you know, like my you know. So it was like you know, like ah, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, uh, yeah. So that was that was a little more respect. What about you? You I know you had you started you. What what happened to you after you? Is he flew? by the way? Is he still Did offering a, a discount more? to your friends? Because I I could use a little help. Uh, I don't know. You got it. You got, I don't know if he's still around, but I can All check. Right. Ben Ehrlich in Franklin Square. Got it. Excellent. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if he's still there. Uh, after I flew, yes, I got a little more respect, but you know, it never ends. It never it never ends, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. So my mom kept harping on me. You know my mom. Mm-hmm. We talked about my mom. I know your mom very well. Yes. We've, 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 uh, everybody who listens to the podcast Great by lady. now has, has heard of her. So, um, so she is, was harping on me forever to come down and do one of these public relations events in her retirement community in Del Boca Vista. <laughs> is it really Del Boca <laughs> Vista? It's Beach, but it's like right next to Boca. So it's like, it's like Del Boca Vista from Seinfeld, you know? It's like, yeah, right. That's actually, right. It's, it's just true that the, the retirement community, immediately next to hers like right across the street is called Mm -hmm. journey's end (laughs) 
how depressing is that? Right? Who wants to live there? Like, <laughs> Come here to finish it off. <laughs> did you, it, oh, man. Did you just call the place like one foot in the grave? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Is the logo a, a shovel? No, I, no, the logo is like a, a rainbow. <laughs> it's a stone. A what? It's, it's a rainbow. It's what is like, it? Like uh, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> Oh, it should man. be a, it should be an undertaker in the shovel. You're right, Jason. Oh, but, but anyway, so she gets me to go down there. That I finally say, okay, all right. So now they got this clubhouse in the middle of her community, and they pack it full of a couple hundred people, seniors, all seniors, right? And it's actually a pretty good facility, right? They got some pretty good equipment. We we're talking before about how the AV stuff can be very stressful, you know, making sure the yeah. PowerPoint works and. So, but they got this really nice projector, state of the art equipment, this great sound system. Like, this is going to be great. The problem was they got a bunch of seniors running the thing. All right, uh, and and so I get up there on the stage, and it doesn't work. All right, so I'm standing up there, and they can't get the they can't get the PowerPoint presentation launched. So now I got to talk them through it from the stage. Right, so I'm like. Okay, right click on that X. I'm like, no, 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 that's a left click. No, 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 you got to right click. <laughs> Job. No, okay, no, all right, stop, stop. Hit control, alt, delete, hit the, <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to, like, with hundreds of people watching me. <laughs> and, I, and at one point I get frustrated. I'm like, oh, my, this is like teaching my mom how to use a computer. And I realized those were her friends in the yeah. back. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was a complete disaster. Uh, complete disaster. Uh, I got through it though. Was your mom happy? Was your mom happy? She was happy. She wouldn't have been happy if she got ten percent off her taxes, but she was still pretty happy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a little more. Useful. My mom has never been very, you know. My mom is still. She lives down there in Del Boca Vista, right? So she's still hanging her head, walking around because she's like the one person in her development whose son didn't become a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. it's like, well, you are a doctor. You're just not a medical doctor. You're a yeah. doctor of that engineering. That kind of gets paid. Uh, I think that's a Which is, as, yeah, as, as people would say, yeah. <laughs> Again, <laughs> former former family members would say, yeah, you're not a real doctor. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You ever meet a real doctor? You may think you're a doctor. You're not a you real doctor. You ever meet a state trooper? Yeah. <laughs> you're not a real doctor. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, no, you had me thinking about a few of these things with um, – Speaking at these different places, I spoke at my mom's uh, retirement home. So you speak at like your kids. Have you gotten into? Have you spoken at your kids' school yet, Garrett? Because you had kids pretty much after you became an astronaut, right? When yeah. Buster Buster was was born after you left the office. Yeah. So, so you yeah. never have you gone? You've gone to speak at at the at the yeah. Kids I show up at yet? his elementary school for uh, you know what I do is I show up on career day. Yeah, I uh, kick yeah, yeah. ass on career day. I freaking own the place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, uh, you know, you go in there and, and it's great. Like I remember one day, year I walked in there and there's some kid's dad who's dressed in the, in like a business suit and a tie carrying a briefcase, no kidding, an actual briefcase who carries a briefcase anymore. But this guy had a briefcase and he was in the, I carry a briefcase. Oh, well. No, I don't. I, I don't carry. I've never had a briefcase. I just, it's I a European right carry all. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so this guy's got a briefcase and he's no kidding. He's an accountant. Okay. He's an accountant there for career mm -hmm. day representing for his son. Yeah. And I walk in there and he takes one look at me in my blue NASA flight jacket, one look. And he goes, Oh, that's not fucking fair. <laughs> <laughs> I rule elementary see, but, school. career. Day. But you're, you live in California now, you know, so you don't see in Houston, it was different Garrett. Like when my kids were little, uh, and there was astronauts all over the place. So, you, at, for example, at Armin Bayou Elementary School, where my kids went to elementary school at first, and then they built a new one, but you know, you know, but it's still in that same area. So, in any of these elementary schools near the space center, you know, especially if you lived in town or somewhere else, it might have been different. Lived in town, meaning in the city of Houston, far. But if you lived in the surrounding neighborhoods, like we did, you know, you had maybe like twenty astronauts back then, because when the office was big. Yeah, you know, so many. It was like a. You know, they would have stuff plastered everywhere. You know, and your flown items. They wouldn't. They would get lost. No one cared. It was just so much stuff. You know, it's like a school somewhere else. You know, they really would kind of treasure this this stuff you would give them. But in Houston, it was just so much of this stuff. And everyone, of course, because you want to. Oh, my kids going to the school. I want to go and show up for my kids. And the kids were kind of like, yeah, okay, right, fine. So um, 
one day, like one day, you know, Daniel, you know, the game calls, oh, we had a Mr. Smith came and spoke to our school. Right. You know, and it was Steve Smith who lived in the neighborhood and his kid, of course, went to those school. I go, what did he tell you, Daniel? It's all the same old thing. Follow your dreams, shoot for the stars, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. He's six years old telling me this. So it's like, it was almost like, oh, another one of these guys want to come in here and give this talk. They had this one thing that was organized. I think it was Dom Gorey's wife. Do you remember her? Yeah. Remember oh, Wendy yeah, yeah. Gorey? That was my first Dom's wife. Yeah. So they were very active in the PTA and all that, you know, they're at this school. Oh, yeah. Their kids were a bit older than mine. Mine was still kind of little. Uh, maybe in kindergarten or something like that. And uh, she she had this like space day she was organizing. And so she re- she asked everyone who was a parent at this school to participate. And there again, it was like, she had more than what she could do with us. So she didn't know what to do. So again, and I was unflown, oh, right? Man. I was an unflown guy at the time. So at this peer, so you had like Ellen Baker talking about science and space to the kids. And it was this night, you know, this <laughs> stuff. So what she had me do was I flew, what I did is I, I did this, I helped them memorize the planets by showing the video. You know what that song, if you hear the planets in a solar uh-huh. system, like my oh. the acronym for it's a no, my, my very, very educated yeah. mother just served us nine pizzas, right? right? So you go, my is Mercury. My very V is Venus, excellent. E is yeah. Earth, uh, right? Right. It was my excellent or very. Ed- it was very educated, and mother. There was a school thing where you were learning, you know, and then whatever mother and Mars, you know the. So you go through the whole thing, and that's what I did. She didn't let me talk. I just showed the video. <laughs> so I'm like showing the video. We're singing the song. My very ed-. so like you know, and I had like the five year olds kind of uh. like you know. That like you show it, up with so. a with a flown, yeah, what... a flown flag in the state of Texas to give them, and then they're like, "What? No moon rock." but they had all of this stuff and i think what happened was uh you everyone's returning these items and i flew like a picture of all the kids in the school i think i think i got this idea like from steve smith (laughs) because he was always good at this kind of stuff but i took a whole picture of the of the school in space with me and 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 and, you know and i think what happened he got a new principal a few years later and he found all this stuff that he had and he they actually framed it and put like a put it all over the place because they had this stuff that they never they never even displayed because they had too much of it. Because every month there was another, you know, back then we were flying space shuttles. You know, like every month there was not one or two, but maybe like three parents coming back with stuff. <laughs> hey, show it to my kids, you know. And they're like, oh, we're going to do it all this yeah, stuff. Another one. Anyway, so that was that. Was that. Um, what else? So then after, that was, after flying, it got a little better. A little better. You would have to say. And and you're are you still are you still doing these things? What, what else you want to What else you want to tell us, Garrett? You have well, there was you a couple. You, what was this one you did? There was a couple of times yeah, what that you, you and you I had yeah had experiences of a lack of respect together. That's for right, other people. So remember that time. Remember that time you and I went up to uh, Montreal to train with the Canadian Space Agency. Now we were still, I think, fairly new astronauts at this time. I don't think I I probably hadn't flown yet. Yeah, I don't me think. Neither, but- and it was probably, it was to check out the, the uh, station arm out right, there. We're right, we're getting training on the, the Canadian space station arm. robot arm. Right, yeah. cool. Right, because they were still developing it when we were there. That's right. Right, they, it wasn't in space. Now it's been in space for 20 years or whatever, but uh, maybe not that long, but, uh, but close yeah. to that. Yeah, we up there for a long and time. Was, by back then, yeah, back then it was, it was still on the ground. It was working like a charm. We I needed a good tour yeah. for our good yeah. friends up in Canada. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Um. But we go up there, and we went up there at, a, at an important time. We went up there uh, when, right after the first flight of Julie Payette. Yes. Now, Julie, pa- Julie Payette was my classmate. She was a Canadian astronaut who was in my astronaut class, and, uh, and she was a Canadian a Canadian astronaut from Montreal, from that area, from French, from the French part of French speaking part. Of right. Canada. Which is practically yeah. another country. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. Because it's like, because they, because what did McLean, yeah. didn't McLean. Much different culture, different culture for sure. Didn't yeah. McLean tell you they didn't count yeah. like the actual first Canadian female astronaut, right? <laughs> yeah, it was Steve McLean, very good friend of mine who ended up being the head of the Canadian That's space right. agency after he, uh, after he was done flying, flew a couple times, was in my astronaut Super class. Smart guy. And he had actually flown. He had flown as a payload specialist on the uh, as a Canadian astronaut years earlier and then was added to my astronaut class um, and as a Canadian to get the full mission specialist training to fly again. 
And he and Julie were the two Canadians. And so he was kind of like the senior Canadian astronaut out of the group that was there. Mark Garneau, I guess, was more senior. But there was a bunch of these Canadians there. Bjarni was in your yes. class, right? Mark Garneau, and, uh, Mark Garneau was the first course. Canadian in space. And he was the first Canadian, he was my right? First so he was in the, he was in the, at the... Uh, Oh, they, yeah, he's a yeah. great guy. Now I think he's uh, some sort of Congress or Parliament guy up in – he's amazing, that guy. And then Hatfield was yep. there. But Hatfield was was junior to oh, McLean. Yeah. I think, you know, McLean had flown before him. And so uh, and there was others, of course, a lot. You know, and the tradition continues. But he had said to me – because when Julie was selected to fly, he goes, well, this is going to be a big thing for Canada. You know, you know and it, it's going to be like, you know, it's, it's like a big – you know – a big thing. And I go, well, you've already, you know, you've had Canadians flying space. He goes, yeah, but this is different. I go, well, you've had Canadian women flying space. And he goes, yeah, but this is different. With Julie flying, it's going to be like the first Canadian or the first Canadian woman in space. It's going to be that big of a story. Yeah. You know, that like people, and it was true. I mean, it's just it, it's like, everyone's like, do we have anyone else? <laughs> it was kind of like, you know, I don't know. It's like a John Glenn and Alan yeah. Shepard thing, you know, like John Glenn, you know, <clears throat> or even, you know, people think John Glenn was the first guy on the moon. Well, now, you know, we all know it's Neil Armstrong. But, you know, John Glenn had all – got everyone thinks John Glenn, John Glenn, you know, and, you know, or whatever. And uh, that's kind of was like Julie came after, but, you know, she was going to be this big, you know, this big news. And she was great in the, with the media and a great speaker and his personality. And she would sing and play music and I don't know they what the hell she had. Like, going, but she had all these They eventually made her like the royal regent, governor, assistant governor. Yeah, she got a big yeah. job after she left after she left the Canadian Men Space General Agency. To, she was in charge of the country or something. I don't know. She was doing something up there. She was a yeah, the secretary the Queen. I forget what a secretary general yeah. or something. And appointed by the yeah. Queen. You know, so she was she was big. You know, she was quite the well known person up there. And this is again, that was after she flew, but this is as she was getting ready to fly. But go ahead, what happened, Garrett? I remember we get up there, we, we land there. at the airport in Montreal, and you can't escape Julie Payette. She's everywhere. Her, like, there's a giant <laughs> wall behind, like, where you go through customs, and it, like, like the size of a football field, and there's her face, <laughs> right? like, her face like, <laughs> everywhere. Every single bus stop had a poster of Julie yeah, Payette. Yeah. Like, remember she was she yeah. posed with like her helmet and her gloves, like, yeah, like, yeah, that, yeah. That, that picture was everywhere. Couldn't just, yeah. And we get to we get to yeah. uh, the space agency, and the and the whole all every hallway is littered with Julie Payette pictures and yep. everything. Right? Do you know Julie Payette? That was a yeah. big thing. Do you know her? Yeah. Like, have you met her yet? Yeah. Like yes, she's my astronaut classmate. Oh well, we know she's better. She's much better in in, in the class than you are. But you knew her. <laughs> you know. You, know. So, Ooh, you yeah. knew her. Yeah, you knew so her. So we were getting a little tired of this, so. right? Yeah, yeah, it was a little. It was a little much. Well, you know, it's like a lot. There's other Canadian astronauts, yeah. you know, and you know, Julie, to her credit, would, would say, "Hey, you know, there's other people too." But they just, you know, the whole the press just loved her, and you know, that was that was the story. She's, you know, really fun person. But go ahead, what happened, Gary? Well, <laughs> when we go, we go in there, uh, uh, and uh, and I remember we went to the gift shop, like on our way out, like we were wrapping up the yeah. training. We go in the gift shop just to get some trinkets yeah. for our kids, you know. Well, I didn't have kids, but I guess for my wife. And uh, and you're looking around, and the, the whole gift shop is nothing but Julie Payette. You get, like, Julie Payette oven mitts. You get Julie Payette uh, uh, paperweights. I don't know. They had Julie Payette everything, right? I remember, and, and, and you went up, and you walked right up to the lady at the counter there. What would you tell her? Because <laughs> I, I feel bad for my other Canadian astronaut friends. And I said, what do you, do you have, like, hey, you got anything like a Bob Thurks? Bob Thirsk, who's another Canadian great guy, you got a Bob Thirsk toothbrush? <laughs> you know, how about a how about a Steve McLean refrigerator <laughs> magnet? Anything at all? Do you have anything? Anything. For these other guys? Nothing. 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 It was all, yeah, all Julie Payette's. Yeah. See, how about a Bjarni Trigvison? Yeah, those, uh, those other guys got no respect. How about a Bjarni Trigvison uh, keychain? <laughs> 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 they had not. They literally had nothing. For they them. had nothing. Those guys got. They got no respect. No respect. They good. had no respect. I guess if, if you're if you're an American astronaut, that's one thing. But if you're a Canadian astronaut, when Julia Payette was there, yeah, no, that was you didn't get any. Yeah, you weren't getting any any attention. Uh, Paul Paul Lockhart uh, again, one of our classmates, was an Air Force pilot. flew her flew with her up to Canada or, for for an event, and I think he flew her. He was he he was a front seat Air Force pilot and was getting hours flying her up to these events she was going to. And and uh, he was introduced as 
the pilot for Julie Payette. <laughs> so, so he didn't even have a name. So you know, it's like his Julie Payette. You know, it's like American astronaut Paul Lockhart. No, we have Julie Payette and her pilot. <laughs> He's the pilot for Julie Payette. Oh. And uh, yeah. Julie, this is Julie Payette and her manservant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, here he is. And, yes. Yes, please do not bother her with anything. Bother him with any questions but, that don't have to well, do Well, this with- whole cultural thing, yeah. though, is uh, it, it stares you in the face when you go up to the Montreal. They're very, very proud. They're Quebe- Quebecois, right? They're very, very proud of their culture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember I went up there uh, on another trip. I, I, I think this was a different trip. And I'm there with mm-hmm. Jean, Jean-Francois, right? <laughs> All right. So yeah. Jean-Francois, who's actually, yeah. who's actually he's French. French. Yeah. Yeah, he's French from France. Like, French. legit French. Not from Canada French. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, like French, France, actually French. French. Um, yeah. And I'm up there with him, and we're gonna do some training, and uh, and I go first, okay. And uh, and and uh, he he was going, he went back to the hotel, and he was gonna come when I'm done, and then he was gonna go second on the. They only have one simulator, so he was gonna go second. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm doing my training, and we finished early, okay. So I decided mm-hmm. I'm gonna call the hotel to let him know, hey. We're wrapping up early. You can you can you can get an early start on yours and you, you finish early and and try to try to, yeah. to help the guy out. So I call up and I'm in this I'm in this room. I don't have a private phone. I'm I'm in this room full of all the instructors, all these French Canadian <laughs> Can, Canadian Space Agency instructors are all in this room. And I pick yeah. up the phone, and I get the the receptionist at the Queen Elizabeth Hotel in downtown uh, Montreal. And I said, hi, uh, mm. uh, my name's Garrett. I'm one of your guests. I, I want to talk to another one of your guests. Can you put him on the phone, please? His name is Jean-Francois Clairvoy. <laughs> yeah. and, Clairvoy, and, C-L-E-R-V-O-Y, and all, yeah, Clairvoy. And all of a sudden, like, this whole room full of French Canadians starts, like, laughing at me. And I got no idea <laughs> why. I'm like, well, what did I say? <laughs> you know, and that, they're all pointing at me and laughing. And, yeah. and, and and the lady on the phone at the hotel, she's like, I am sorry, uh, but there's nobody here by that name. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? I just checked in with the guy like five minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, we checked in together. I'm sure he's there. His name is Jean-Francois Clairvoy. And again, everybody laughs and points. <laughs> and she goes, uh, I, I just checked again. Uh, yeah, look, uh, look here. And there's no, no thing. Uh, there's no Jean Francois Clairvoy. I'm sorry. And I said, Look, I know he's there. And she goes, Okay, uh, how do you spell? And I said, I, I said Jean Francois C L E R V O Y. R. She goes, Oh, Clairvoy. He's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was embarrassing, man. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But the thing was, is that in Texas, never mind the United States, but where we were, that's what everybody called the guy, was Clairvoy. I think he would introduce himself like that, too, because he didn't want to have to start teaching French to all of us. So that was it. If you pronounce his name correctly, you can hurt yourself. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it was a hazard. It was a hazard for us Americans. Uh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, so that was it. So uh yeah, going up going up there for that. What about what about this thing you were telling me about with uh with Pharrell what you got you got sent to it. You want to tell that I story? Because really I've got a follow up. I think it's kind of related yeah, we got, to that. We got tons of and then I think we'll end it. Um but this yeah. was like this is way after I was flown and 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 even after I retired from NASA, I still go out. Right. So these are more recent. Yeah, let's, let's talk about a recent no respect story. We should point out you got one, and then I'll tell we one. Point, we're, we're, we're terrible no businessmen here. We should point out that you and I both speak uh, at public events. You know, as yeah. a job. You know, we still do. If, Correct. If any of you want to hire us, you can go to our websites. Right. And you get or, or Washington right. Speakers Bureau represents both of us. You can go there. There's a bunch of you can go hire us to come, and we'll tell s- funny stories and try to inspire your corporate events. <laughs> corporate, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, maybe this one's such a good idea to talk about that. We can be serious <laughs> too. We, we're we're both very good at being serious, yeah. believe it or not. Right. Yes. Yeah, it can right. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I'm doing one of my paid events. And they hire me to come to this conference. And there's a lot of celebrities at this conference. 
And it was right around the corner from my house in L.A., so I figured, okay, I'll do this one. Um, uh, uh, and and uh, so I go to this thing, and I think I, I think I, I thought I was going to present to these like uh, there was like Pharrell Williams was there. There was uh, a lot of a big, a lot of very rich people, you know, some very big, uh, important businessmen and stuff. And I thought I was going to present, and I get there, and I find out that they hired me not to speak to the main crowd, but to talk to their kids. To like to entertain the kids. I'm like, I'm like a clown at a kid's birthday party. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, talk about no respect. I, so they, they take me like yeah. from the big hotel ballrooms where the real events are going on. They lead me like downstairs where they got the kids and they got them with like a bunch of chicken fingers. And <laughs> are, these, are these the kids of the celebrities yeah. who were there yeah. or these are? Oh, so they said, we will provide babysitting. I'm a babysitter. Which is what they told the other people. We will provide, come bring your family. We will provide babysitting. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I had to, so I, did my, I did my presentation for these kids, and these kids were spoiled yeah. brats, let me tell you. There's yeah. something that, there's something when you're, uh, I don't know, that, but they, these were not well-behaved kids. There's something, there's something when there's no respect involved. Oh, there's no kids. respect at all. You're like, oh, you're the clown. I'm the clown. I was like, I was like, uh, I, I thought maybe I would have to pop out of a cake or something. I don't know. And 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 yeah. they, they, so that the, 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 they had they had actual babysitters, right? Professionals, yeah. That were like tearing their hair out trying to get these kids to behave. You know, and they're like, yeah. be quiet, sit still. You know, they're screaming at them. And I'm like, I, 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 yeah. I, at one point, it got so bad, I just stopped. And like, all right, I'll just wait yeah. until this gets under control. And the, the, the counselors are screaming at him. And um, uh, I, I, and I won't, I won't uh, mention any names of any, in, in any specific celebrities, kids that were horribly <laughs> behaved. But uh, let's just say, you know, maybe instead of making all that music, spend a little time disciplining your kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to take care of that kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah kids are kids yeah <laughs> that's funny all right no i had i had a, i had an experience a, a couple of years ago this is after being in and as you say you know we we do speak at corporate events and you know and we you know i try to do you know when you do the if you do ones that are you know for a school or something like that yeah I, you know typically you're not gonna you know that's more of a volunteer kind of donation sort of your time thing and so one this one, one, one guy I know who actually books me occasionally to do talks. He's like an event guy. He said that his daughter of school was how his daughter was a teacher and they were having a career day at this, at this, this middle school in, uh, in Brooklyn. What I mind, you know, it'd be really, he'd really appreciate it. To do. I'm like, yeah, of course, you know, it's a favor. It's a school here in New York. So, so I go to thinking I'm speaking at this career day. <laughs> And I show up with my computer and I, you know, talking about my AV and I'm setting things up and they're like, we don't, you know, they're like the guys coming, we don't really think this is necessary. And I go, why aren't I speaking? And they're like, oh no. And it was a, it was a parochial school. It was a Catholic school. So they're like, oh no, Sister Francis is the only one that talks. You're just there to maybe answer a question or something like that. So they had, so they had me, they had me and they had, I think whoever they knew that were friends, there was. It was me, and there was, I think, uh, you know, like an uh, an investment guy, a banker, or something there, and then there was like two corrections officers because they were across the street from like the the correction f officer facility training area in Brooklyn or something like this. So they had two guys come across the street, and then it was the nun. But we weren't taken away from the nun who was there. So the nun talked about, you know, her career as a nun or becoming a priest, trying to get these kids, and we were just kind of hanging out, which was was fine. But I was like, uh, it was funny because I went there thinking. Oh, I got my computer. I'm going to set up, and I'm going to talk to these kids. Like, oh, no, 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 you're, not, you're just. Did you gonna... have your, your, you have your blue was a, suit it was on? A, and it was a fun event. Did you have What's your that? blue suit on and everything? And I probably, yeah, probably my blue flight jacket on, you know. And I'm, I'm standing there, you know. And they're like, "We like the correction officer's suit better than yours. Yours doesn't, yours doesn't even come with a weapon or anything. <laughs> we like that one better." So, oh. but yeah, that's um, that was it. Anyway. What else, Garrett? What else do we I think got? That's, I think that's a wrap, man. I think uh, that's a wrap. I think, we, I, think uh, I mean, there's plenty of other examples in my life where I got no respect at all, mostly <laughs> from my family. But uh, but that's okay. Well, yeah. we, we could save that for. Uh, we could go on. This could be the theme for the for like the entire podcast. Be a whole new podcast. Pretty much. You can save that for another yeah. session of group therapy, yeah, sure. and we can all work together on this. That's a great idea. Yeah, we'll see. We get Doctor Phil to come on. <laughs>
Don't worry. All right. So All right, guys. Well, that's it. Why don't we wrap it up, Gary? Yeah, so thank you for listening. If you made it this far, uh, my hat's off to you. That's uh, <laughs> appreciate that. And remember to like and subscribe. Right. Like and subscribe. Yes, please. Like and subscribe. More important than listening. Like and subscribe. That's right. That's right. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, uh, we'll be back. We'll be, I think uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about other times that we got no respect at all in our lives. Uh, on, on future episodes. we'll pick this up. We've, we've stumbled upon something here, Garrett, that there's a lot of material there. So we'll try to revisit, revisit this and tell you some more stuff. Change here, it. But... If, if, if people don't think we're funny, we're going to change the t- podcast to two disrespected astronauts. <laughs> <laughs> two depressed astronauts. <laughs> Uh, but thanks for listening, folks. Tune in again next time. We'll see you. We'll, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.